So welcome to our circular coffee conversation uh, today. Um, so as you know, this um, this format basically was born a couple of years ago when we decided in Reading that we wanted to bring to life the circular economy and explore different themes and topics um, around the, the circular economy in itself. So uh, at the moment we are covering the fashion theme, and today we are very lucky actually to be in, uh, to be joined by Andy Taplin. Uh, from uh, gift, oh my goodness, sorry, my language today, <laughs> from Gifted Boutique, CIC. Um, so the format is as usual, Erica will start having a conversation with Andy for the first 20 minutes or so, and then if you got any question, put that in the chat, and then I'll ask uh, Andy towards the end. So without any further ado, I'll pass it to Erica. Thanks, Sophie, and hi, everyone. Um, before we get into the details of what Gifted Boutique CIC is about and does. Um, I'm going to start and ask Andy um, what we always do is ask about for a circular conversation starter, so kind of a physical object or, or something that represents sustainability or the circular economy um, for him. So Andy, what is your circular conversation starter today? Yeah, so, um, so it's a uh, metaphorically and literally can you see that sorry i can't see myself um uh it's a twister. spinner it's a spinner from the game twister <laughs> uh which we bought from the charity shop um a couple of weeks ago um so i give it a go and it's it's a bit broken um but my my boys are still having still having quite a lot of fun with it um, they're still playing the game. Um, we use the charity shops around us in Caversham all the time, a little bit too much. And um, but I think what what I'm trying to say with this slightly broken twister spinny thing, and maybe maybe I'm doing the charities a little bit of a disservice with this, is that um, charity shops aren't aren't for everyone. They're and yeah that's kind of a lead up to what i was thinking about with gifted really yeah i think that's a really interesting point because i i know for some reason i think maybe because my parents always or my mum always used them for me it was always normal <laughs> even throughout university when i was young uh, like i was dressed in that and then went on to buy it so never thought it was something different but then yeah for some people they've never potentially even been in one or even would think about um, shopping there. So that, that, as you say, I think that really uh, leads on to the, the nicely to the first uh, area is to find out a little bit more about Gifted Boutique, so you see what it is um, and, and really what were the motivations behind, I suppose, starting this and setting it up as well. Yeah, so we're, we're a uh, charity charity boutique who raise, who raise money for um, children's charities in Reading. Um, and like I say, said, one, one of the motivations was to provide something in between the charity shops and an alternative for people, for people to buy from buying new really. Um, so I've been, I've been looking for a project, um, in my spare time for quite a while. I gave up football when my eldest son was born. Um, and I was looking for something to fill the gap. And I'd noticed that I'd had three or four pieces in my wardrobe, which I didn't really wear, quite good brands. And it made me think that a lot of people have probably got the same. And sure enough, my wife had the same. Um, my brothers, uh, people in my social circle. And so I thought if I could get that debt stock together and get enough together to start a charity boutique. Could I use my, my graphic design skills? Cause I'm a gifted is something I do um, in my spare time. Um, could I use my graphic design skills to, to create a decent looking charity boutique um, and raise a little bit of money at the same time? I love that jump from football to starting a charity shop, I think. 
<laughs> like that journey, yeah. journey there. <laughs> yeah, it's not everyone's path, is it? But, yeah. <laughs> and then I suppose part of it is um, also on the website and some other elements, but there's quite that, that strong link um, about supporting young young people or, or children in Reading. Um, you know, what, what made you decide, I suppose, also on, on that kind of focus or, or and it's, it's interesting how you almost develop those partnerships um, with those organisations. Yeah, um, we've got, we've got um, sort of, I've, I've worked with some of the charities that, um, that we raised money for for quite a long time in my job as a designer. Um, we've got some personal relationships with the charities they've helped some of the children that we know um so yeah that's that's kind of why we went down that route and i think i i don't know how i'd ask for people to give me designer stuff if it was for me to make money from <laughs> so so i'm using using those charities as a as a means to um obtain the clothes as well yeah i think that that's almost a that's a really interesting point in, in that story or the message that that you want to have to be able to almost get the good quality elements um and i think one question which is interesting to look at is is you've probably seen also the rise of these platforms of depop of mm -hmm. i think i've seen i've not actually used it yet, like vintage as well yeah. where yeah potentially the people selling on there are selling it for profit for them, themselves or the high quality items there. What, what really made you the decision not to try and use potentially one of those platforms or create your, I suppose, your own um, identity? And, and yeah, stuff? and yeah, and we, we do use Depop. Um, ah. We shift, we shift stuff from um, <laughs> once, it's, once, once it's on the website, we move um, it's easy to shift it onto the Depop platform. Um, we do a tiny bit on eBay. Uh, I think I think Vinted I couldn't use as a as a company. You need to be you need to be a um, an individual. Okay. But the but the webs our website acts as a bit of a hub for um, it. It tells people that we're trustworthy. Um, it creates a brand. Um, uh, uh, it gives people confidence in us. Um, yeah, so I also wanted to tell the stories of some of the charities that we raised money for. I don't, as I said, I'm doing this in my spare time. I, d I don't think we're going to eradicate poverty in Reading by me selling this in my spare bedroom. So I I was it was always in my mind what what other added value could I give and I think to make the blog quite creative and to tell the the charity stories that's you know the the website enables us to do that really yeah could could you um highlight some of the different charities then and, and what they're working on yeah so we've we've got we're doing it for four charities um uh so um home start reading um babies in bus got support um jelly the arts charity and number five uh young people and so it's it's a broad range of charities or all, all children's charities but we we didn't want it to be we didn't want it to be a single charity I always kind of think am i spreading myself too thin but I, I quite like the community feel of it and um the idea that people in reading are supporting children in reading rather than a certain aspect of you know child poverty or child illness or so yeah that's and and the charities they help us as well we um i felt like i needed uh the charity's help in launching in launching us and 
you know, Jelly have got a really good, really good following. Um, uh, one of the other charities come up with some pop-up collaboration ideas. Um, and yeah, so, we, so we, we use them as well. So yeah. Yeah, sorry. I hopefully my internet connection's okay. I know I did go unstable there <laughs> slightly, but I heard all of that. I might, might have frozen. Um, I, I'd really like picking up on that, that what you were saying about, you know, supporting a number of charities, because I think there's, there's something quite nice and different. Like you're saying, it's not just going to one maybe large, huge worldwide or, or national one that sometimes, mm. and we had, um, I think you saw Julia from, from Upcycle Fashion a number of sessions mm -hmm. ago talking about, you know, what happens to those closing there. It sometimes doesn't get sold locally, like the good stuff gets siphoned off and sold in another part of the country or somewhere else. And actually, yeah. um, there's this nice idea of, of closer local loops. So you're almost facilitating that, like that local clothing reuse as well as local benefit. Um, yeah. Which yeah, that 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 that's is quite different to some of the you know, the traditional charity shop um, elements around that as well. Um, around your clothing, and I think we can see quite a, a nice rail. <laughs> the shop, oh, the pop-up shop behind you. <laughs> you can sell, sell some uh, as we go. Um, with that kind of clothing, are you? And, and Jennifer actually, and, and I think you watched Jennifer's also chat um, with QSA the other day, talked about kind of data and the customer and, and you know, the behavior around this. And I suppose this will be an element that you're probably, I think you've been going about a year, you're probably learning as you go. Are you already seeing kind of, you know, learning about demand and, and you know, what are the things that sell fast and um, little, little, I suppose, customer data points? Yeah, uh, we're, we're starting a survey at the moment because we're, we're finding that um, we're getting less men's clothing donated, but annoyingly, the men's clothing is selling much quicker. Ah, um, yeah. I think that's perhaps something to do with, you know, the sales channels that we're using, um, the type of people that are likely to donate um yeah i could i could tar men and female with various brushes but i'm probably pretty bad for the brand to do that <laughs> but yeah <laughs> so um uh but we're, we're planning to do some pop-ups as well um once the restrictions um eased um and maybe some like tupperware style parties um which hopefully will get us into female audiences where we're finding we've been given lots of lots of those, those clothes but yeah I came into it with absolutely no knowledge whatsoever of supply and demand or what I was likely to be given other than from people in my social circle so so yeah that's been quite interesting Some, something else is we don't get donated many larger sizes. I think that's probably a problem with the fashion industry generally. Um, and I, I don't have the expertise to curate our drops. So we're at the mercy of what people give us at the moment. But I think, but I think if we're to do Tupperware parties and events, then I think I need to cater for mm. but all sizes. So yeah, that's something I need to, think about and yeah perhaps get yeah. there or... I mean I think that's that's something that I also even see the big brands either not engaging with in in more yeah. inclusive larger and, and, and different sizes and, and still uh, that smaller element um in terms of oh, I think I, I like the way that you, you call it your, your drops <laughs> Um, and it'd be interesting to talk a bit about, um, you know, as a graphic designer and a designer background and, and you've worked with other organisations, I think, how has that influenced some of the techniques or the things that you're trying and, and the way that you've evolved the gifted um, kind of brand? Um, yeah, so I think, I think as a designer, you're always 
you're always driven by what the client what the client has what their product is and that's quite a difficult thing for you know to make changes to people's lives as a as a communicator if the product isn't there in the first place and um what what we what we try to do is what i can, what i can do is to try and hint at some of the small changes that people can make we do we do a bit bit of messaging around um you know environmental environmental issue issues but i don't I don't know. I don't want it to be preachy or political. I don't want to put off half the audience because they don't think it's for them or they're put off by certain messaging. But I think what I, perhaps what I can do is to convey that um, new products um, and secondhand products, that often there's not a lot of difference between them. And and yeah, if you, I think if you were get to go into a high-end high street shop in the Oracle and buy, buy something there for over a hundred pounds, wash it, take the tags off, wash it once, um, it, it would be in the same condition as some of the stuff that I've got behind me. And, ha, you know, it doesn't smell, it, <laughs> it it won't reduce your social status if you purchase it. Um, that's, you know, saying it's for kids in your community, that's that's the easy thing. But, um, but yeah, how do, how do I, and I, I think the answer is to make the clothes look as good as possible and to, um, and to give people a brand that they're not ashamed of buying from that's transparent and all those sorts of things that I guess I learned in as a graphic designer. So, yeah. Yeah, no, that's, I think like you were saying there, going right back to your point at the beginning of, of those people that probably wouldn't want to go into a charity shop or, or don't like the smell of <laughs> clothes. I worked at a charity shop for a while and, and actually uh, we, you can't wash all the clothes that arrive. You know, that's impossible. Right. You have to try and hope that they arrived in a good condition. And we had like a steamer to kind of try and get the creases and make them hang better. But you couldn't necessarily do much with the smells or, or whatever. So even if it was good, you know, that all of those um, behaviours that might put off people um, as well. Just before I hand over to Sophie to, to pick up on any other uh, questions, and I think she's got a few of her own. Uh, <laughs> as well. Um, one of the questions that we also always ask our guests is if you've got another um, local organisation or, or wider <laughs> organisation um, or a particular topic that you'd be interested for us to try and get on or hear more about. Yeah, yeah, I've been thinking about this one as well. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I was inspired by uh, Mary Portis, who does the uh, Mary's Living and Giving shops for Save the Children and um, and also Wayne Hemingway who does the uh, uh, shelter boutique by boutique by shelter I think and um, and yeah so I, I'd love to hear from like a more established me um, uh, but failing Mary Portis uh, I'd like to hear from the charity shops as well. Um, um, they do a huge role in, you know, keeping stuff out of landfill and how does textile recycling work and mm. and things like that. Um, lots of good ones in Caversham. So yeah, I'd like to hear from from those. Yeah, we were at, we reached out to one because I think in Reading there is a kind of big textile recycling or at least one that collects. I've seen it <laughs> done an industrial thing and trying to kind of um, contact them as well. But yeah, thank you very much, Andy. Don't go anywhere because I am just going pass over <laughs> the vir to pass over virtually uh, to Sophie to, to probably ask some of her questions <laughs> a few more. Thank you.
Thanks, Erika. <laughs> so yeah, if any of you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. Um, now is the perfect time for that. Andy, I really, I really like your story. And I have to admit that when you look at your website, it doesn't look like this is a side hustle at all. So <laughs> that was really, really interesting. And I think as you're a designer, I was wondering, you know, how much do you think the design aspect can influence the people in buying secondhand clothes? Yeah, I think I, th I spent a lot of time taking shots of the clothes, um, some badly, um, some wonkily. Um, and yeah, that was a bit of a learning curve and it, uh, but once I've got those processes, it, it became a lot easier. Um, I think if, if I'm competing at the high street level, I think that's difficult um, doing it out of my bedroom, but I think I've got an advantage in, in that I'm a designer that certainly up against people, young kids on Depop or someone on Vinted who's trying to make money from themselves. I've, you know, that bit kind of, kind of comes relatively easy. Um, yeah will it will it make people buy I don't, I don't know i think if i could if i was to you know some of the pop-ups i'm thinking about putting on like a cool event creating a cool brand i think you know that's what that's what the high street shops are doing so that's what we try to that's our aspiration really to be to be like those in a in a marketing sense uh, but I think it's really interesting because, as I said, you know, looking at the website, I actually really like the photos because I think they're quite different, you know, and they really show the product in that respect. So you get that nice background. So you really, yeah, I think there is a really nice aspect to that. And you were talking about the, the pop-up shop as well. And that's probably where, you know, like I think the high street retailers and so on, they've got their own things, but that's where you can also bring your personality. And I think there's a lot um, of that that can really play it, I guess, and, and so that's really interesting in that. I was wondering, so you clearly you're on to that journey as well. So what's been, I guess, your biggest learning so far? Um, yeah, I, like I say, I spent a lot of time um, manipulating photos because they weren't taken at the right angle. But um, and I've become quite au okay fait with a, a, a textile tape measure now. Um, I know how to measure from pit to pit or dress length or heel height, um, things I had absolutely no idea <laughs> about whatsoever before. So yeah, those things I still, you know, my expertise in, isn't in, um, in trends or you know, that's something I'd like to explore a bit further or maybe get some help with. Um, and I'd, I'd like to collaborate with some local photographers as well. Um, you know, put the expertise in, in their hands really and um, let them have some fun with it and yeah. Mm, that's really well that's really interesting as well because that's maybe something we can take up as well because we're all about trying to connecting the dots in the local community so that's great to hear that this is something that you'd like to connect with um, other people so maybe we can you know link some of those uh, um, contacts that we've got as well there is also a really nice uh, comment from Iran in the chat saying that the business model that you're having basically is a really interesting one where I think there's a, that really interesting aspect where in people's mindset you know charity or second hands might have a certain connotation but the way that you present them and sell them make it really more accessible to all of them so I think that's uh, that's really interesting and yeah it's fantastic to have people like you uh, doing that thank you <laughs> <laughs> right so thank you so much Andy it was absolutely brilliant to hear you know your story and your journey so far because I think there's definitely <laughs> great ambitions as you were saying as the, the UK reopens up as well so thank you for coming with us um, so just so that you know in two weeks time we've got Josie Warden joining us and um, she's the regenerative uh, design lead at the RSA 
um, which promised to be another <laughs> really exciting conversation, uh, touching on the on the different aspects of the, the fashion, the circular fashion world. So a very big thank you to all of you. Have a wonderful day, and see you in two weeks time, hopefully. Mm.